Gameplot I Sam, welcome to part three of the Tamiya Toyota Super Build. Before we get going today, make sure you sub to the channel, you click the bell notification so you get notified of our latest videos. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below should you wish, I do reply to them all. And don't forget all the products, tools, solutions, glues, anything you see me using today, well, you can find linked in the description down below. Click on it, it takes you a big long list of all the items and where you can buy them from in the UK. Search elsewhere for them for yourself. Uh, and anything you see me using, have a look and you'll probably find it in there. So, welcome to part through the ta uh, Tamiya 2 to Super Build. Um, we're going to get this finished today. We've got a lot of stuff to get through. So, uh, we're not going to hang around and dilly dally. We're going to get straight into it. Move along quick, and I'll try and show as many steps as I can along the way without lingering around forever showing mindless drivel we don't need to see. So, what have we got left to do? We've got all the grills, uh, front rear um, splitters, uh, we've got the windows to do, polish the body, uh, put a wash on it. There's quite a bit to do, and uh, I ended up with about four hours of footage for this, um, filled over a couple of days. And uh, we're going to try and get it down to a 30 minute video if possible. So, like I say, we're not going to hang around. If you've got any comments or questions, please ask down below. I'll try and answer them as good as I can. Uh, if you've got any queries about the build as well, please just, just ask down below. And there we are. So, let's jump straight in. And we're going to jump straight to the spray booth because we've already got the parts uh, cut off, cleaned up, mounted, and primed. Because we don't need to see that. We've seen that many times. So we're going to jump straight into the spray booth and get them painted up. Okay, so as I said, we're in the spray booth. We've got a Tamiya LP5, a semi gloss black, and we've got TS spray decanted, uh, TS14 gloss black that we're going to use on our mirrors. All the parts have been cut off the sprues, cleaned up, mounted for primer, and primed in UMP black primer, and left overnight. Some quite unconventional mounting, but hey, if it works, it works. So we've got numerous parts to spray in the LP5 for semi gloss black. I'm not going to show them all because that should be boring, and we've got a lot of. Uh, footage to get through today so everything was given two to three coats um, not not being um, gentle because the lacquers you can be a lot more aggressive with them but now a little bit thicker um, but we just want that nice even semi-gloss black all around a lot of these are exterior parts or grills so they are going to be shown from the outside so we want a decent finish on them uh, we're through the apex 0.35 needle and we're at 18 psi as usual so like i say we're just making sure we've got a nice even coat uh, all around there's probably a good 20 parts to paint here and we've got our wing mirrors as well now the wing mirrors did call out for a two-tone but we're just going to go for gloss black because that's the look i prefer to be honest um, so um, the lp5 is thin approximately 60 percent um, thinner to paint and um, like i say just getting down nice even coats we get a nice decent finish uh, this is the only part of the kit that could probably be improved on a later date uh, by getting rid of that plastic mesh effect and having a real mesh grill to the front. So like I say, we've got quite unconventional mounting here. It's on a uh, wooden stick uh, on the um, masking tape turned over on the sticky side, so all the parts are stuck down. So we've got one side with all these parts and the other side we've got the wheel inserts as well. But hey, if it works, it works. Other thing we're spraying as well is we've got the light clusters. They need spraying in semi-gloss black. Uh, it did say to mask off the centers for the lenses, but what we'll do is we'll remove them later on with a cotton bud and some um, Mr. Leveling Thinner. Uh, it's a quicker, simpler, easier way of doing it and saves a little bit of time in the process. We're exactly the same with the other parts, just making sure we get a nice even coat and all the angles, make sure everything is covered properly. And then on our wheel inserts, these are going to be semi-gloss black as well. I think it'll be a nice contrast against the high chrome finish of the standard wheels. So again, make sure we get all those little recesses, angles, coming in from different sides to make sure they're all fully painted. So, like I say, the wing mirrors do call out for a two-tone colour of semi-gloss black and gloss black, but we're just going to go with gloss black, I think. So we've got some TS14, which is the spray can gloss black. Uh, no particular reason why I'm using it, it was just a hand. But we're going to put down, or we've already put down a mist coat, and coming back in with our second coat now. And this will go on heavier to get a nice wet coat. We'll let that flash off for 10 minutes and then give it another coat later on and let it dry. Um, interior windows have all been masked off as well. The masking set comes with the kit, 
and you apply it like I've shown before, really easy, just take your time, make sure they're all in the correct place and you burn sure the edges down as well. Um, and then nice mist coat, this is UMP Black Primer, through the apex we're at 30 psi now for the 0.35 and we're just getting down a nice mist coat to begin with and again two to three coats should be sufficient on this uh, to give us nice even coverage what we don't want to do is get it everywhere all on the other side of the glass because then we're going to clean it all so just take your time and spray it nice and slow so on the side glass they've got an interior part and an exterior part to spray so the exterior is simulating the window rubbers so again, nice light coats on the outside. And on the inside, uh, there's like a semi uh, matted window in the back. So we've had to fully mask one side for the rubbers. And then when we flip it around, you'll see uh, there's a little mask for the rear window. And we use some Tamiya tape to outfill the rest. Um, so we don't get paint everywhere. So you can just see it there at the back, at the bottom. So again, just not nice light coats. What you don't want to do is flood this on. There we go, a little bit of a blockage, but it's gone. Um, you don't want to flood the UMP primer on, just take your time, build it up, as you might get seepage under the tape. Um, let it dry, you can dry it off with the airbrush should you wish, but just let it dry and then build it up slowly. Two to three coats is normally enough, so once you're happy, put it down, let it dry and then come back and apply your other coats. So this is our third coat going on now, and as you see we've got nice even coverage all around. We've got a nice dark finish, and then if we look through from the other side of the plastic, it should be a nice even coat all over. Again, once this has been painted, let it dry. I have to let it dry for at least 12 hours before I'm masking uh, or handling because I've had the paint rub off before. Uh, so just take your time. Patience is key. And if you're in doubt at all, my standard answer is leave it overnight. So the following morning, we're going to take off our masking tape. Gingerly peel it away. Just take your time. Uh, number one to make sure you don't rip off any paint and more importantly you don't snap the glass which is very easy to do and hopefully we should have nice crisp lines if you don't there are ways to remedy it you can either strip it off and start again uh, using some IPA or what have you or use a cocktail stick and you can use the edge of that to rub away any excess paint or any part where it seep through it is rectifiable just take your time and again when using a knife like I am which I wouldn't recommend if you're not um too sure of yourself just look for an edge that's not fully there we go all the way down and then poke your knife in grab it and then grab your tweezers and just slowly pull the tape back and there we go not too bad at all same on the other side look for an area where you can grab just take your time with the blade you want to grab the tape and not scratch the glass if you're not sure, use a fingernail or use your tweezers, but for me, I'm pretty competent and confident with the knife. If in doubt, just take your time. And there we go. Now, we did have a little bit of overspray leak under on the top of one of the windows. So all I did was got a cocktail stick and just rubbed it along the top using the edge of the window as a guide and took off the excess paint really easy. That's the beauty of using the UMP primer. It does come off nice and easy with a little bit of pressure. So we've unmasked all the windows, now we're going to use a duster and get them all the wipe and get any fingerprints off or residue. Again, be very careful, it's very, very easy to snap these things, um, a lot easier than you think. So just take your time and you also find you might create a little bit of static doing this and they doing later on. But for now, we're just trying to get rid of any fingerprints or marks on the glass. Also be aware why you're wafting things like this cloth around on the bench, make sure there's no sea eagle on the bench. And you pick it up and then wipe it across the window. Been there, done that before. Definitely not something you want to do or something I want to repeat. And there we go. So we're going to flat back our body now. We've got some 8,000 and 12,000 micromesh. So we do have a few imperfections in the body. We've got a few spots of dust uh, which we need to take care of. So what we're going to do it first is just go around the entire body, flat it all with the 8,000 just to take that sheen off or any imperfections or any smaller dust spots. Then we'll come back, have a look in a second. We've got a 3M, uh, are they Trismat? I think it's Trismat, something like that. Um, 3000 grit sponge um, that we're going to then use to take off the higher spots of dust. And then we'll hit again with the 8000 and then follow up with 12 and then finally give it a good polish. Now, with a lot of these dust spots, you've got to be really careful because to get rid of it fully, 
you run the risk of running right through that 2k clear and all your paint below so for me if i get rid of most of it i'm happy uh, and that's what we're going to do here today we're not going to struggle to go all the way back and potentially ruin what is already a very very good paint job without the dust in this i would have more than likely left this alone um, but using the micro mesh is very forgiving just don't apply too much pressure make sure you keep it wet and you rinse it off and you're just taking the edge of the shine off the finish so there we go once you're happy that you've gone all over the body we're going to grab some kitchen roll not the best thing to use because it can scratch the finish too uh, but i know we're going to polish this up in a minute anyway and as you'll see when we come back in a second you'll see it's just taking that shine off the 2k so it'll just take off all those light imperfections you can go a lot coarser if you want down to 3000 grit but for me the 8000 is adequate so we've got that 3m 3000 grit pad now we're going to wet it and we're just going to focus on the dust spots there's several on the uh the roof and several on the bonnet as well not a massive amount but just probably five or six in total but we're just going to focus on knocking them back like i say i'm not going to worry too much about getting rid of them completely because if we do that we're more than likely to get burned through the 2k have to 2k it again and then let it sit to dry again and i don't want to do that i'm perfectly happy with the finish and a few imperfections here and there are not the end of the world so there we go once you've gone over it with that pad again we'll hit it with the 8000 grit just to take it back again and then we're we'll coming with 12,000 micro mesh again and um, give it a final polish up at the end with our secret polish which will all become um, apparent at a later date i've been testing this for quite a while now and as you see by the end result today it works phenomenal but again preparation is key um to take them back flat at the finish uh polishing it will give us a better finish but to be honest this finish was that good out the airbrush you could have happily left it so we hit it with the 12,000, and now we're coming in with our tamiya sponge and some of our polish now it looks like i'm pressing really hard on the bonnet i'm not actually pressing all that hard um, I'm just going back and forth in crisscross patterns. Be very careful with these sponges. They can burn through edges quite easily if you're not careful. So just take your time. I only really like to use them on the bonnet and the roof or the hood and the roof. Um, for the sides, I like to use a cloth because I feel like I've got a little bit more control. But on the larger, flatter areas, I can happily use them. But just take your time. Don't apply too much pressure on raised areas or edges or leading edges of the bonnet and what have you. Just be careful. And just take your time i'm not really applying any pressure here at all very little i'm just allowing the um the compound well to polish this we didn't really need a compound today i'm just allowing the polish to do its job and polish up all those um uh, light scratch marks we caused with 8000 and 12000 grit micro mesh so onto the side of the body same polish using a duster now and um, we're just very carefully going around all the curves and complex shapes making sure we've got everywhere covered and then we'll buff it all up to a nice high shine and get it all nicely polished up. Once you have got it all polished up, uh, what I like to do is use an old toothbrush. I've shown this before. I actually forgot to record it on this video as I would have shown it in this. Use an old toothbrush to get into all the panel lines to get this polished dust out. Uh, and then airbrush with water in just to jet wash any remnants out of crevices and panel lines, what have you. Then dry it off and give it a final buff up. And as you see, we've got a very nice shine off this. I'm very impressed with that Spanish Gravity 2K. It works absolutely phenomenal. It's a nice thin 2K as well. It polishes up well. And uh, yeah, it just looks absolutely phenomenal. It really does. Really brings out the depth of this color too. So there we go. Quite happy with that. It's a very nice shine. Decent finish. And like I say, now is where we need to start being really careful with this because it's where damage can easily be caused so for the most part i'm more than happy with this there's a couple of parts on the roof where we probably could have pushed it a little bit more but i didn't want to ruin the nice finish we had so i'm happy to leave it where we are so panel line wash we've got the tamiya panel line wash i often apply these before the 2k but since this 2k is a little bit more forgiving a little bit thinner um, i thought we could see if we could apply it afterwards and we could so bob's your uncle uh, everyone's a winner and um, yeah it works really well so yeah i'm really liking this 2k it's a lot thinner than the pro range and i think it gives a better overall finish personally 
it's a lot more expensive but hey i always said if i found a better one uh that costs a little bit more i wouldn't mind paying for it so this is the tamiya black panel line wash i've thinned mine a little bit with the winsor newton santador uh, odorless mineral spirits just to make it a little bit thinner and all we're doing is touching the panel lines let the capillary action carry it around we'll then let it dry for an hour or two and then come back and take off the excess and just leave all our panel lines um, showing nice detail you don't need a lot at all just let the capillary action carry it especially being 2 k it'll flow around really easily as you can see just touch it and it flows no problem at all job done so after a couple of hours, we come in with some Winsor Newton Sand Soda uh, Odorless Mineral Spirits on a cotton bud. I'm just going to lightly rub over the top. We're not putting any pressure on at all, uh, but we're just going to lightly rub over. Once we get the majority off, we'll spin the cotton bud around, use the dry side to dry it up, clean it up, and get all that excess wash off that will be left behind. So a lot of people don't like doing this. I originally didn't like the washes at all. But I've been adding them to all my vehicles, cars, bikes, and what have you now for quite a while. And I do prefer the look. Um, you've got to be careful on the colour. On a dark colour like this, the black is perfect. But on lighter colours like white, orange, etc. I think mixing a little bit of grey in there to dull it down makes all the difference. But just be thorough going around. Make sure you get it all removed. And uh, once we've got it all removed, we'll come in with our cloth again. And give it all a nice buff up and get our finish back to where we had it just after polishing. So these cloths I'm using, they're literally just cheap dusters. Uh, I usually rip them into little bits, but this one I've just been using as a general polisher. So it is almost a full size, but like I say, be careful flowing around on the bench like this. Uh, make sure there's no glues or anything that can get on there and ruin all your hard work. But all we're doing is just buffing that body back up to a high shine and removing the remnants of any more of that wash. So the wheels, we left the wheels in the factory chrome finish. Um, our wheel inserts we sprayed in Tamiya LP5 semi-gloss black earlier. As you can see, I've already got one on. They fit in there absolutely perfectly. So a couple of dabs of CA glue right into the center, line them up, drop them in, and give them a push in with the cocktail stick, and they fit in there fantastic. It's a really nice contrast with the high chrome and the semi-gloss black, so a nice look. Uh, once these are in and dry, we'll grab some silver and a cocktail stick and put some detail on the road nuts. I did have footage of this. I've no idea where it went. <laughs> I'm not sure if my camera switched off as I was doing it, uh, but it's pretty simple to do, and you have seen me do it before. So, four decals to go on the wheels, one on each, a toe to symbol for the center of each one. Pretty simple, standard decal, and into the water for a couple of minutes. Pop each one on, remove the water, apply a decal solution, and job done. Let them set. So the de Tammy decals, not too bad a quality at all. Um, I didn't really have any issues whatsoever with them. Just take your time with them, as always. Uh, they released off the back of paper fairly quickly. Responded well to the, just the normal, uh, sorry, the strong uh, UMP decal solutions I used on these. Play mainly for speed. Uh, I knew they'd probably need them anyway. So I went straight for the strong and um, applied a bit and left them be. Tires, tires fit on perfect. Uh, you got two larger, wider ones for the rear as are the wheels. So make sure you pay attention which one's which. And uh, once your wheels are on, your tires are on, they look really good. Uh, if you cut them off the sprues, make sure you clean up the backs properly. You don't want any of this interfering with the fit. And then once you're happy, pop them in place. The poly caps, pop them in. Give them a little bit of a twist whilst you're pushing gently and they should slide on there no problem at all very happy with those wheels happy with the contrasting colors and they look good against the red calipers as well so there we go there's all four on and they're looking good just make sure they're all lined up and pushed in properly which they are very happy with that looking good so Quite a tricky part here now these are the chrome inserts we talked about in one of the very first videos so i chose to leave them out the instructions say to put the bumper on last and put these in before you put the bumper in but we chose against this so i've dropped it in place you can see it through the window at the front there i'm just checking this stick reaches which it does making sure it's pushed home they're going to get a little bit of ca glue on there and be very very careful taking it through the body 
just going to put a dab either side and then leave it to dry and that will work perfectly there we go we're going to get a clean one with nothing on now just to push it fully home once we're happy with that we can leave that to dry and do the front one at the same time now our light units are several decals to go in here you've got this bigger one uh, they're all handed as well so make sure you get the right decals for the right side um, again standard decal and procedure pop them in again we went straight for the strong UMP solution you've got this insert at the bottom and then it looks like a side light uh, at the bottom to go on there too our glass although the glass goes on for the inside I still chose to use the marker trick around the sides just in case you could see it so it's up to you if you do it or not but I do it on all the glass now using the edding marker um, just to add that detail of the rubber trim that goes around the side of the headlights so again just take your time make sure you don't slip if you do slip uh, UMP cleaner uh, will take off anything um, you've put on there accidentally so don't worry about it if you do slip but just take your time in the first place and it'll make life a lot easier for you so as you see we've got some white glue I don't want to be hitting this with any CA glue whatsoever this has been sat in that tub for about 20 minutes so it has really started to go tacky and it's perfect for this kind of job because it'll grip the light almost straight away and then once it's dry it'll dry nice and clear this is the deluxe materials glue and glaze just noticing all the locator points make sure we've got the lens orientated the right way just spotted another one there we go well done paul so make sure the light's the right way, drop it in place, slide it over, three locating tabs will locate, and hopefully that glue should get enough purchase to hold it whilst we get the actual light cluster in as well. There we go, making sure it is in, it's fitted in place, which it is. Also worthwhile before you put the light lens in, give that a rub over with a cotton bud as well. Get your fingerprints off. I'm just test fitting this for now. See which way around it goes, where it connects up to. There's a couple of nice locator tabs there as well. So once we're happy, we're all cleaned up. We'll glue it in place with some CA glue. There you go, the other side's in now as well. And as you can see, we've got little tabs there either side. So we're just going to put a little sea glue run down the back along the top part underneath, just there, and then right under the bumper by the splitter, just there. And then we can hit it up with some kicker, should we wish, to make it dry quicker. We then got little vents to uh, install. These are given the option, well, the appearance of a grill outside. I think it is one of the areas of the kit that could be improved on. It's not really detrimental to it. But I think a bit of real mesh would look a lot better. So some of the aftermarket people out there will cover this, I'm sure. But again, pop it in place, a little dab of CA glue on top, and that's it. It's all done. Our rear diffuser now as well. We've got a clear plastic part in there, which we're putting with the glue and glaze. There's little locator tabs either side, so we just put a little dab of glue on each one. Hold it in place, some kicker on a micro brush, just a touch on each side to get it glued in place. And it fits on there perfectly. Very nice indeed. So like I said, there is a little clear part in the center. There's a decal to go over that later. But for now, we're just concentrating and getting it uh, glued in place. Our rear light clusters have been painted in LP, I think it's 52, which is the clear red. We airbrushed the insides of them um, the night before. They've been left to dry. They push in through the inside exactly like the front did. And then we're coming in with our light lenses just as before. But these, these ones kind of click in place. They locate in the bottom first and then push in the top. But just to double check, we are going to add a dab of CA glue in there, as always. Just to place them in. And again, once they're in, there are some little grills to go at the side as well. So again, same procedure as before. Pop them in place, a little dab of CA glue, and then we can hit it with kicker to dry it. And there we go. Nice and easy. 
front splitter now. We've got our front grille in place already. The front grille is held in place literally by two locating points. A couple of dabs of CA glue and in it goes. And this front splitter is exactly the same. There's a couple of holes on the outside and a couple of pins on the splitter. So we just added a dab of CA glue on each. Popped it in place. And that's it. Really simple. Really quick and easy. Front windscreen. Just checking it fits. See how it goes in. Uh, we've attached the little panel at the bottom that holds the window wipers. Again, using CA glue. And now, now we've got it in place. We're going to do the same trick as before. Add CA glue to the bottom part, the top part, and hit it with kicker to glue it in place. Doing it this way, uh, we get no glue anywhere near the glass part. So you don't get any risk of any fogging or what have you. And while the odorless uh, minerals, mineral spirits, while the odorless CA glues do work well, um, they can still leave a mark on the glass. So I still like to keep everything away from it if I can. And uh, putting a couple of dabs on the very front, hitting it with a kicker, which dries it instantly, works very well. And then we can head to the back as well. Add a couple of dabs at the back, hit it with a kicker, and it'll dry instantly in place and shouldn't leave any mess on the glass at all. Just take your time doing this. You don't want to slip or drop any excess glue or put that body in your glue. Really is at these end stages is where things will start to go wrong. So just really take your time. There we go. A couple of dabs in there. A little bit of CA kicker again. Quick touch. Quick touch. And that's it. That's our front windscreen in place. The rear screen's in exactly the same method as are the side windows, precisely the same. And the side windows kind of locate in place as well. So just make sure you pay attention to that when you pop them in. We've got our interior light fixture and mirror in place now as well. And a couple of vents that go on the bonnet as well. A little dab of CA glue underneath, push it in place. Make sure it doesn't come off like that. There we go. Push it in. And once you're happy, let it dry and move on to the next one. So, door handles. These were semi gloss black as well. Uh, they got one locator point. So we've had a dab of CA glue on there. Make sure it's in the right place and just push it home and let it dry. Exactly the same for the side. Just give it a little tap to make sure it doesn't fall out. There we go. I can say exactly the same for the other side. We've got our side skirt parts, the bit of black trim that we sprayed earlier. So we're going to add several dabs of CA glue along the side of the body. More inside and outside, so towards the inner edge. And then grab our little side skirt part. Always make sure you've got the model the angle that you're comfortable with to work at don't be struggling uh, always turn it to the easiest angle for yourself again just pop these in hold them for a few seconds once you're happy grab your micro brush with kicker again to make sure that they're not going to fall off or go anywhere again repeat it for the other side they fit on there absolutely perfectly there's no issue at all here nice and simple just be aware of the amount of super glue you're using and where you're putting it as well you don't want to ruin all your hard work now with too much CA glue. Again, if you're not totally competent or confident with the CA glue, uh, you can use white glue. It'll take a bit longer to dry, uh, but it like, makes much less mess. So we've got our A-pillar trims. I did toy up doing these in carbon. I'm kind of glad I did them in semi-gloss black now because I think they look a lot better. We just test fitted it to make sure it fits. There's a little locating groove in the A-pillar, and then we're going to pop it on in place make sure it locates properly at the top like so just hold it for a second to make sure it's glued in once we're happy let it go set repeat for the other side and that's those done nice and simple our mirrors like i said earlier these were sprayed in ts14 gloss black we've got the metal um, transfer inserts to go in so again just cut around them peel it off pop it in place once you're happy and it's in place, clean up your fingerprints. Cotton bud is ideal. And these are ready to be installed. So a very careful dab of CA glue. This is a thicker CA glue from my precision pen. Uh, be very careful at this point. Make sure once you push that mirror in, don't press too hard because you push the glass in. But make sure that mirror is attached before you move on because if it falls out, you stand a good chance of leaving CA glue down the side of the body. 
few remnants of decals left now as well. We've got the Chota symbol front and rear on those chrome parts we put in earlier. Uh, we've got the little part to go on that rear diffuser, clear part. A GR badge for the boot lid. And then we've got our metal Supra badge to go on there as well. So again, just take your time. Again, in these finishing stages, it's so easy to mess things up. So just take your time. Don't be rushing. If you feel you're getting tired, go take a break. Um, you know, take 10 minutes off, do something completely different. And once you get the decals in place, we've got our number plate one. We only put the number plate on the back. I didn't like the one on the front. Uh, once you've got your decals on, hit it with the setting solution and leave them be. And then we've got our Toyota Super Badge. So we haven't actually taken this off the clear plastic. We've left it on. I'm a little bit out of camera shot. I do apologize. As you can see, we can line it up that way. Once you're happy where it is, push it home. Grab a cotton bud, make sure it's all burnished down nicely. Once we're happy with that, grab the clear part and just very gently pull it off. Now, what I found um, with the Aston Martin builders, these metal transfers like a gloss surface to grip. So, yeah, on this, no problems at all. And that's looking really good now. Now, on this kit, this has got something I've never seen before. There's a clip at the back of this one. Um, it looks like a push button clip so you can get the body back off as well. So there's two, lo two locating points at the front that it slots into. And then on the back, once you've got the front in like so. And you're all fully home, you push the back in. And it literally clicks in place really easily, really simple. That page, there you go, that seems clicking in as well. There we are. One of the easiest fitting bodies I've ever done. And very, very well thought out by Tamiya. A little bit of rogue decal there. We'll just get off. There she goes. Really nice, simple fit. And again, very well thought out by Tamiya. I hope they do that to a lot of their other bodies. Because it makes life a lot easier. Exhaust tips now. Now, what I found is these seem to be handed as well. Um, I put one on already. I meant to put the other one on. It wasn't quite fit. So a quick switcheroo, as you see me looking at now, looking for the locating point. I'm like, nope, it's not that one by the look of it, is it? Let's try it. Nope, it's not that one. Okay, so we'll take that back off. Yeah, we'll take this one back off. The beauty of using the thicker CA glue is it doesn't dry straight away. So you can take things off, switch it around quickly like so it home and grab our other one again and pop it in place and you'll find that they fit on a lot better they are called out in the instructions which side they go but obviously i cut them off without looking as you do but there we go once they're on chuck a wash in there they look really really nice and there we go so that is it that's the whole car complete uh it's come out really well very happy with it um really can't fault the kit at all it is a superb kit and i'm very happy with this finish and the color i chose as well so let's go to me have a look at my final thoughts once we've had a quick look around at this uh have a look at my final thoughts take some pictures of it have a look at those as well and um yeah i would highly recommend this kit like i say the only improvement i could see was to replace those plastic grills with uh pe ones but you know it's a very fine problem as such uh, out the box the kit builds up really well and uh, i'm more than happy with the finish on this and there we go we're all done um what do you think of the kit i, I love this kit it's been a fantastic build um top class engineering by tammy the way it went together absolutely phenomenal the way that body clicks on the little clip at the back is a great touch um and i can't think of a single bad thing about this kit at all not a thing everything went together well it was cleverly thought out um it's a great looking car it wouldn't be my first choice of car or model but i think in this color the color really does make it uh and that gravity 2k i am well impressed with the spanish one um so it's well worth a try if you're interested uh i will be using that for the near future that's for sure so um like I say, very happy with this, very happy with the colour we picked. Um, that LP4145 mix 
that we used on the Casey Stoner bike. It's a colour I've liked since I mixed it and uh, having a bit left over it made sense to use it on this car. So we were primed in UP Grey Primer, uh, we base painted it in the Tamiya LP Mix. We used a Gravity Spain 2K Clear which went on absolutely fantastic and was an amazing finish straight out of the airbrush. Um, we flatted that back with 8000 micro mesh, took care of any uh, spotted dust with 3000 uh, 3M pad, uh, hit it with the 8000 again and then finally at 12000 and then we hit it up with the uh, polish which I'll talk about when we release it uh, which has brought out an absolutely phenomenal finish and I'm very happy how it looks. The wheels, the chrome we left standard as we did with the exhaust tips as well because the chrome was amazing out of the box. Um, all we did was painted the inserts in semi-gloss black LP um, and painted the uh, road nuts uh, in silver um, and that's it really, everything else is completely out of the box the interior turned out well um, with that red black grey combo and uh, it's, it's just a fantastic, I honestly cannot recommend this kit enough um, and that's it, so that's that build done we're going to jump back into the bike build as the next video build. We're going to get back to that. I'm going to build, uh, I'm going to a little bit of break from videoing because it's all I've done for the past two weeks. Uh, I was going to do a little build for myself. So in about a week, we'll be back with the bike and um, we'll really get cracking with that and get motoring along with that build. So there we go. So let me know what you think down below. If you like the build, do you like the colour? Is there anything you need to change or added to it? Um, do you think you might buy the kit? Uh, it's well worth looking at. And we do stock at umpretail.com. Shameless plug. Um, but for me, beautiful kit, and I will more than likely build one in a future um, personal build of my own, I think. So, very happy with that. There we go. So, hope you enjoyed the build. Uh, I do like these three part build series, they're nice and simple to do, they're easy to film, quick to edit, so on and so forth. And um, yeah, I do enjoy doing them. But I'm itching to get back at that bike, so can't wait for that as well. There we are. Thanks for watching today. As always, check out the Natasha Scale Modeler Facebook page and forum, upretail.com. We get a lot of the approaches you see me using in these videos. The Paul ISM bench, which is where all my work is shared. Um, the Live of the Bench page for the Friday Live Show, the Off Air Hangout group for Off Air Hangouts. Um, and most important of all, hashtag don't be a dick to other modelers. That's it. So there we go. Thanks for watching today. I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye bye.